I'm Dave Mays, and this is Collect Call with Suge Knight. What you're about to hear are conversations, raw and uncut, with the legendary founder of Death Row Records. He's currently serving a 28-year sentence in California State Prison. His honesty, vulnerability, and current state of mind will all be heard in this groundbreaking podcast series, featuring conversations with me and many other guests who have agreed to accept Suge's Collect Call. Suge will be putting periods to all question marks while answering everything hip-hop fans worldwide want to know. History will be made and documented in real time, each week on Collect Call with Suge Knight. Suge and I both want to hear from you, so if you have any questions or input, please be sure to contact us at Breakbeat Media, authentically hip-hop. Welcome to Collect Call with Suge Knight. This is Global Tell Link. You have a prepaid call from Suge Knight. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, style 5 now. Hey. What up, Shug? Man, getting past the holidays. So check this out. What's up? If you don't have a platform, if you don't do things to make it where other people can learn from your platform, you become like the, you know, crackhead Whitney, Whitney Williams, whoever the name is, <laughs> of 2024, you know? So, that's been said. It's a big difference between loyalty and stupid. And I'll be first to admit, a lot of times I was showing somebody loyalty or showing loyalty in certain situations, I was really being stupid as a muff. Hmm. You know, I got shot in my hand at the short club. I'm a up behind the hall, boy. My PO them used to be all over me. One of the reasons why my my, my PO was all over me is uh, I had two of them instead of one. And then parole office I was going to, three or four of those guys that was parole officers, basically cops, they did security for Snoop. So I was a conference, and they was always trying to cross me up, come out my spots and all that type of stuff. And then, instead of me, like, putting it on the table, I didn't want to put it on the table, even though the probably, probably wouldn't have got violated a few times for not doing nothing. But I was loyal to the, uh, to the code that we fell up under. But that really was stupid because they was police trying to cross me up and make sure I got violated twice or nothing. Then, you know, when you look at it, I remember one time they was doing the Vibe Awards, right? Mm-hmm. So they was going to give Andre an award. So we came here tonight to honor somebody that I love and I respect most props to, Dr. Dre. Took off almost like you know, three or four times, you know? Yeah, yeah. One line when the shit jump yeah. off like, what's these? would try to rush me with these church shoes on. But ain't nobody up here with me, but Quincy Jones, he got a half a leg too. And I see Dre jump up like, bop, bop, bop. I'm like, they didn't rush my n- cuz. A lot of people tried to go out of their way to stop it, just like the 90s y'all saw, so, but they ain't going down like that. They turned around, blamed me. My parole officer called me in, and maybe gave me all kinds of new conditions. Why well, I couldn't go to clubs, couldn't go and be nowhere. And if it was already bad enough that they said that I couldn't do business or sign an artist if they knew any person was in the game, which it was impossible. Hmm. So like a lot of artists I had ended up going, they tell me to send the interscope. 
I should have put my foot down, but once again, I was stupid when I didn't. You know, so when all the publicists you heard on those albums on the ship clubs, and it says that writing. But when I went to prison, they gave all the royalties to Dre. When I got shot at the Shore Club in Miami, the first thing they did was handcuff me to take me to, to jail. So I was in the club and I was on parole. They was gonna call my PO. I just had got off parole maybe two days before that. It was a real nice lady, a nurse, you know, grabbed me by the shoulders like, it's all right, it's, just don't bleed out. They went crazy on that lady and booted her out. They ended up suing me, I ended up suing them, the Lord's going at it. So, when we went to Miami to try to settle it. I walked to the room, Kanye was there, I was like, hey, let me holler at you, because I ain't gonna let these Miami lawyers be suing you. I'm making the release you out the lawsuit, even though they started it. They said, he can't talk to me. I said, yeah, white boys don't tell Kanye what to do. I didn't say he couldn't talk to me because they said so. At the same time, when we was getting this thing started, the, the dude who owns a uh, tequila company and his wife is like model and all that shit, right? All these people wrote letters and they read the letters. And they letters was, you know, they people, the different people. They was like, well, she was nice as a, a nigga. A game banging nigga at that. He a crip. I was so not focused on what they were saying by being stupid. I got more mad at the fact they called me a crip and they was calling me a nigga. They used the word nigga and said they didn't want to give niggas no money. So that's how that went. I've been hearing a lot of people talk about microdosing and I really didn't know what they meant until I hooked up recently with our friends at Microdose Gummies. So they sent me some of the products and I've been learning how these gummies can really help. You know that relaxed feeling you get after a nice hot shower or maybe uh, when your to-do list is finally finished. Well, that's exactly what microdosing helps you feel. Now, everyone has their own way of using these products, whether it's to help get you focused, get super creative, or even just get a good night's sleep. One gummy can do the trick. Microdose gummies will really put me in that sweet spot between CBD and THC. So I feel great without feeling like I'm not sharp. And these gummies are becoming a staple in my house. Even my fiance has discovered them. And with just half a gummy, she's got a lifted mood, a creative boost, and manages her anxiety so to learn more about microdosing thc go to microdose.com use code collect call to get free shipping and 30 percent off your first order try them today just go to microdose.com use code collect call you can find the links right here in the show description so it's microdose.com code collect call 30 percent off free shipping When Kanye was on the O, and they asked him to, the lawyer asked him that, um, <clears throat> had he ever heard of uh, good music? He said he had never heard of that in his life. He don't have nothing to do with that, and he don't know what that is. They said, you're on the O, you know that? He said, yeah. There was a lot of other damaging things he said. But I knew one thing, from one mama's boy to the next, my pops raised me along with my mother, but at the same time, his son don't love his mother. My mother used to always love the fact that Kanye loved his mother. Cause I'm so proud of you, mama. Let me tell you what I'm about to do. Leave, mama. I know I act a fool, but I promise you I'm going back to school. That was one strike against me if I would have pushed up on him outside or something, you know? Mm -hmm. Mom's been mad as a mother. She loved Kanye because she's. She always said Kanye loved his mother. Yeah. Then later on, me and Kanye, you know, I don't have nothing against Kanye, it's the black man. 
hip hop. But at the same time, later on, when I was, you know, years went by, I was going to push up on Kanye. And, you know, at that time, Kanye was with Kim. So, <clears throat> when I was in prison, me and Johnny Crackle was real close. He said people out like his little brother. So I'm talking to Johnny Cochran. And Johnny Cochran said, yeah, I want you to come because I got a good friend as a lawyer. And he was talking about Attorney Kardashian. That's when they started telling me about a guy named Damian Thomas, who's, who's one of my producers, was trying to send I sent him, sent him pitch and stored him and do all kind of weirdos talk bad about his girls, you know? So, conversation basically was that if I can help him with uh, Damian Thomas and it might come to the point where if he ever not hear something, I always look out for his three daughters and he got a son. He was like, Kim is his favorite. So I, should, I gave my word, so if they ever had any problems, I didn't go do a favor for them and say, hey, I looked out for you. If the, uh, that tab is not between me and them, that tab was, I gave my word to their father. So that's another reason I didn't push up on Kanye. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that Damon Thomas dude was a weird dude trying to do to that man. But you know, he got hollered at. But Damon Thomas is the guy that used to be, so he says, used to be um, Mary Parker, Junior, the uh, Ghostbusters dude's lover. And after that, him and Babyface was lovers. So that's when he was doing business with Babyface regarding my publishing. I was like, damn, when he first told me, I was sent back, like, you and Babyface? Come to find out, it was worth the pain. Then, I had got shot at one oak. Get out of the street! Oh, it's Suge Knight, Suge Knight. Suge Knight's in the car, Suge Knight's in the sheriff. Sheriff's. I get to one oak. The homie Cat called me, said they was tripping in letting him in the club, so you know I push up there. Trying to push the cat in. He disappeared on my so I went in, it was just me. Well first of all I was there that night. I was with shit. Oh yeah, I had two holes with me, you know? <laughs> I got to that club, I walked did a walk through, I was gonna leave. Somebody in the Chris Brown camp was there. He's like, hey, your uncle over here. We start talking. Next thing I know, I'm walking the loop way around. Cause he pointed some dudes out with a walk the loop way around. Got close by the DJ booth. I heard the most loudest shot in the world. I got shot in the stomach. Actually, I got shot seven times, you know. Crazy thing about all that, when I get to custody, everybody in that incident know what happened for is the club. They got cameras in that club. The reason why I know they got cameras in that club, one time me and Leo Capio didn't fly at your dude. We was chopping it up at the table, you know, we smoking. The owner called. Hand the phone to me first and say, Sugar, I'm watching you smoking my club. And I started laughing. He said, Hand the phone to Leo. And he told him the same shit, right? So I knew his cameras everywhere now. But instead, not only did I get shot seven times when I first uh, went to base camp, I get enraged a couple of those dudes. I said, um, Ask about Andre. I said, The police told me. And he. 
had some hands in that and me getting shot seven times. Well, I said six, I thought it was seven. I thought it was six because one I went through my belly button and I didn't count that one, you know? But anyway, that's what they said. And now when it came to people getting sued and, and correcting off of that, it was a little, where a little girl was 18 years old and they said she shouldn't have been in the club, number one, because she was only 18. No fake ID, no nothing, no white girl drinking. One of the bullets with the shade. They gave her a million dollars. Dude, who they say, let's leave us with the shooter. He got shot in the arm. They gave him a million dollars. Guess what they gave me? Not shit. Same thing with the short club. Same thing with one of them. Same thing when it came to me taking a a manslaughter and another dude taking a manslaughter, but the other dude wasn't black. Killing Fox executive Gavin Smith, who was having an affair with his wife. He walked up to a car with his then ex-wife and Gavin Smith inside. Gavin Smith was killed, but his body was concealed for two and a half years. The jury found him not guilty of murder, but instead guilty of manslaughter. The other dude killed the news per, uh, dude paper UCLA and he was on the news. He found him, he found him, found his wife, rather. He killed with a pipe, called it Dateline, one of those shows. And he killed him, buried him, and found him later, and all the little premeditated cover up and everything else. And at the time, he was in the feds selling steroids and all kind of shit. Had like four or five people testify against him, showing him everything he'd done. He got less of time than me. Well, my fellas, not only they know they had guns, knowing I just got shot, you know, a few months, three months at the most before that. So, who gonna stand there and get shot again and not do what he do? And instead, because I'm a black man, or known as an injury, in, in this industry is one way. I got three times, in, you know, and then three times the amount of time he got racial profile. You know, I remember when I got in this business, I was doing great things and I felt good about myself. Not only is I'm helping other people, I'm helping myself. I'm changing rules in the music business. Here is 89, 90, 91. I'm changing rules and getting the same since the 60s. So, Jimmy Iovine had a wife, that was his first wife named Vicky. Vicky was the most credible woman in the world. A great woman. I remember it was, a, it was a woman I was dating had, had a bad car accident. I probably was like an hour and some away. Hour, 30, 40 minutes away from Jimmy then. Vicky and Jimmy came down there to check on me. Vicky wanted to make sure I was good. When Christmas came around, I, and the Invisible Diamonds came out. I got Vicky and Jimmy matching wedding bands. Hers was all Invisible Diamonds. Jimmy gave me a card, and the card says, I have bought this house, I was changing up, and he's gonna, my budget is a million dollars to hire a tier decorator to decorate my whole house. And she know it didn't finish up in that year. So, another Christmas came. That Christmas came, I bought Jimmy and Vicky matching Rolexes. Jimmy gave me another card. It says, it was a picture of a movie theater. It says, when my house finishes, he's gonna put this half a million dollar movie theater in my house. Guess what? It is gonna be, 2023 is gonna be over with. Yeah. I gave those gifts to them before, two, before probably like 93. <laughs> and see, it's gonna be 2003. He still ain't made good on my gift. I gave me the bread for it. I used to have so many automatic withdrawals coming out of my account for subscriptions that you know I didn't even realize I had. I think most of you can relate to this. 
So I was looking over my credit card statement recently and I saw all these deductions that were adding up every month. And that's when I started using Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all my subscriptions in one place and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with the tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash suge. That's rocketmoney.com slash suge. Go to rocketmoney.com backslash suge, S-U-G-E. So, you know, instead of this going aggressive, I try to do what I thought was the best way to be loyalty, show loyalty, be loyal to, uh, you know, certain people. And that was stupid because they don't give a f- about me and mine, right? But now, I never was accepted in the industry like that. Cause I was for the people and for doing better. And I wasn't gonna be no more. house. So therefore, as my bro always say, they didn't like me because they didn't let me in the door. I kicked the door in. <clears throat> you know, a part of some of the stuff I probably could have uh, had my hand in stopping that shit too. Now I know better because it always been a underground, backdoor, secret meeting with the men in the industry. We're messing with underage boys and gay shit going on and, you know, that was hidden. But they don't consider themselves gay. That's why the gay people don't uh, get behind them. You don't see the gay people get behind Puffy because Puffy and the guys in the industry, they don't believe they're gay. They believe that they have women, they have wives, they have kids, and they had to do that to get in to make it. And then somehow, uh, another, they continue to do that type of shit. That's with boys and men and that type of shit, you know? Hmm. And when you really look at it, let's see, I don't want to prejudge, and even though can be true and you know it's true you still don't want to put it out there and prejudge it it might come to hunting later you know but puffy situation oh yeah yeah <laughs> stay away from stay away from that that stay away from the take that take that match that's all i'm gonna say all right stay away from that all right uh <laughs> second <laughs> they're laughing because they know it's true I'm not making an excuse because i believe in those people shouldn't have went through what they went through but at the same time Judging Puffy, he might have some shit going on when he was young. You know, Mama ran a whole house. There was all kind of activities in there. And he was there when he was young. He might not, some of those men might not want to teach him how to draw. I mean, like there's something else flying in that landed, that landed besides that paper plane, you know? <laughs> You know, um, we just had these meetings. And these meetings, you know, it was about the truth. In the real world. Or you can squabble up. You know, so if you got something to get somebody, either you're going to run their fade or everybody's going to sit there in the trouble with. You know, I can end up whooping on Sam's need a bunch of money. <clears throat> we got ready to do Saturday Night Live, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, Tupac Shakur. And me and Pac was tighter than tight. 
that mother people didn't know this. Pac was like a, a comedian, you know. I just got him George Jefferson because when he start walking and cracking his his arms be swinging and all that and shit. So we in a meeting and uh, getting ready to do Saturday Night Live, the California Love, you know. The Pac goes, "Go on, get it out the way." He, he, he walked over to me, closed his eyes, and put his chin back. He said, "Go on, hit me on the chin and knock me out." He said, "Cause." If I gotta get in trouble for this, let me get it out the way. I said, man, I'm, I'm like, here it goes. I know he got some jokes to say. I said, man, it feels on your mind. He said, I'm not doing a song with Dre. You just go on and get it over with. I said, what you mean? We can do Saturday Night Live, right? He said, no, I'm not doing California Love with Dre because Dre is a homosexual. Everybody gets quiet. Not everybody. The people who's there. Quiet. I'm thinking, okay, here it goes. Trey's gonna say something slick and pack on fire on that mother. It's long. Right. So Trey looks at him and says, I'm not homosexual. I'm bisexual. And Pac just goes from Zero to a thousand. I told you, I told you, I told you. You heard him say, you know what I mean? You heard him say he's a homosexual. Well, he's, he's not a homosexual, he's bisexual. He going around. And, you know, you got to get credit to Dre being a, 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 you know, I would say more corporate right, more corporate correct. And he says, you know, he argued with Pac. He said, Pac, you know. You stupid, man. I said, no, you run around. I said, look. I mean, Dre said, look. I'm bisexual because the fact that this Dre talk. Nobody else. So I'm bisexual because I can fuck up. I'm bisexual because I'm the one doing the kitchen and they the one doing the pounding. And Pac said, ah, that's it. Pac said, look, it's over. I'm not doing that uh, California shit with him in life. So I told Pac stay right there. I told everybody they can exit. Me. And you know, at that point, I should have been. Uh, I, sh I shouldn't have been stupid. I, uh, I thought I was being, you know, showing Dre loyalty and not let Pac get on it. You know, I'm getting the bears. I should have just let Pac get on it. You know, because. Uh, <clears throat> Pac was right. So when they asked the room, I tell Pac, look, well, this is what we gonna do. Hold on. I get sad I tell them to get Saturday Night Live on the phone. They get Saturday Night Live on the phone. I said, look, we come to New York and Pac's gonna perform on the show. We gonna do half of California Love, which is his verse only. And we're gonna do the whole song playing that at you. That's how that happened with Saturday Night Live. Hey Dave, before I forget, I'd like to give a because uh, we was talking in the phone that cut it off, but uh give a shout out to Dito to the homie. Definitely. Definitely, Dito. What up? And then, and then yeah, the other thing, Dave, before we had started back, we was talking, uh, he asked me, do I be following the internet? You know, I don't get no internet in here, so when it comes to the internet gospel, I don't get it, you know? So somebody's speaking on me and think I get it, they, they need to pipe down. Pipe yeah. down. I don't want to get this. I don't know about this, but I do respect the fact that you bringing it up uh, because before we get into it I don't I have a I don't have no access to none of the internet stuff so if some on Twitter or Facebook somebody must have had an account but I know that my my younger son Legend he does the um the Fisher Sugar Night Instagram 
So if you have any questions or want me to answer any questions, just shoot it to him. He'll let me know. He, he can handle it. But nevertheless, yeah. Dave, yeah, there's, it. There's whatever some, you saying, you know. No, there's some there's some foul stuff going on with the Suge Knight Twitter and Facebook out there. I guess, you know, somebody uh, has obtained your password and they've been impersonating you. And these these are people that you know are, are supposed to be in the media supposed to have some type of integrity and you know when you go and you impersonating people and putting out inflammatory you know uh pictures and comments and things you know and it's it's obvious when you you know you're retreat retweeting things from your own account that you know should would never be retweeting from you know, so it's like they they telling on themselves, and and it's it's illegal what they're doing, man. And I'm 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 glad we're able to address it on here, so people know that as of now. So when you say when you say when you say post when you say posting it, what you mean by posting like with that like? I mean, they're taking they're posting things on the Suge Knight Twitter account that people think is your account, and they're posting up different pictures you know like the thing supposedly of snoop being looking like he got beat up if he wasn't with death row this thing with the picture of you and Pac and trayvon lane trying to say you said something about that which you never said and you know it's, it's this stuff is you know it's, this is crazy crazy stuff to be to to be doing and for to think you're gonna be able to get away with it uh you know when it's so obvious is is, is crazy so yeah, only only thing official is that Instagram. <laughs>